1, 12, 29. And if we could get um, the first responders and the judges and Chief Swan to come join us up here. I know it's a sort of tight space, um, but uh, just, and maybe we'll have the council members scoot to the side so we can. <laughs> like yesterday's garbage. Did you, did you say scoot? I did say scoot. And then Aaron's going to go. You ready? Okay. A resolution recognizing the life saving actions of certain Metro personnel and highlighting the importance of recognizing the signs of stroke. Whereas on May 4, 2021, criminal court judge Cheryl Blackburn experienced a life threatening emergency while at work in the Justice A.A. A. Birch building. And whereas when Judge Blackburn started exhibiting signs of stroke, she was luckily in the company of criminal court judge Angelita Blackshear Dalton, who immediately recognized the symptoms of stroke and was able to get medical attention very quickly. And whereas. Metro's first responders swiftly sprang into action upon arrival and communicated crucial health information to Vanderbilt's emergency department so they could be ready upon Judge Blackburn's arrival. And whereas Vanderbilt doctors quickly identified an occlusion, performed a successful thrombectomy, allowing Judge Blackburn to make a full recovery without complications. Whereas Vanderbilt University Medical Center credited Metro first responders, swift actions, immediate stroke recognition for Judge Blackburn's positive outcome and smooth recovery and. Oh, this was your end copy. Wow, thank you. Whereas Vanderbilt University Medical Center awarded Metro paramedic Jesse Gullett and Metro EMT Patrick Lee with an excellence in stroke care pen for their incredible recognition and expedited transport to a comprehensive stroke center and Whereas during a stroke, every minute counts and fast treatment can lessen the brain damage that stroke can cause. And whereas signs of stroke include sudden numbness or weakness in the face, arm or leg, especially on one side of the body, sudden confusion, trouble speaking or difficulty understanding speech, sudden trouble seeing in one or both eyes, sudden trouble walking, dizziness, loss of balance, or lack of coordination, and sudden severe headache with no known cause. And... Whereas the most effective stroke treatments are available only if the stroke is recognized and diagnosed within three hours of the first symptoms, and whereas if someone might be having a stroke, act fast and do the following simple test. F. Face. Ask the person to smile. Does one side of the face droop? A, arms. Ask the person to raise both arms. Does one arm drift downward? S, speech. Ask the person to repeat a simple phrase. Is the speech slurred or strange? T, time. If you see any of these signs, call 911 immediately. And. Whereas the Metropolitan Council is proud and grateful for the city's hardworking first responders and their swift actions that helped save the life of Judge Cheryl Blackburn. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, the Metropolitan County Council hereby goes on record as recognizing and honoring the life-saving actions of Judge Angelita Blackshear Dalton, paramedic Jesse Gullett, EMT Patrick Lee, firefighter Kayla Tony, engineer Jeremy Taylor, and firefighter Max McWright, and firefighter Pete Winglet in responding to criminal court judge Cheryl Blackburn when she experienced a stroke on May 4, 2021. The Metropolitan County Council further goes on record as highlighting the importance of the signs of stroke, especially acting fast. This resolution shall take effect from and after its adoption, the welfare of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. And if y'all could give a round of applause for everybody. And if we can, um, I'd like to maybe ask Judge Blackburn to come up and say a couple words and, and then maybe Chief Swan. Well, I certainly want to thank the council for having us and for doing this uh, resolution because it was very important. First of all, I'm alive 
And not only that, am I alive, I also have no consequences so that I could get back into court within two weeks uh, and s continue to serve uh, the citizens of Davidson County. And that's really important. But I just w thank you for recognizing these people because they do terrific work. And uh, what the neurologist told me as I was coming out of all the surgery was that this went perfectly. That is, from the time Judge Dalton saw what the problem was until they had me into the uh, ER, it was perfectly done. The only problem was the, the, the clot in my brain. But everything is fine, and I just want you to, th to thank them for all their work as well as Judge Dalton. Thank you. keep these on. Well, as always, I want to thank the Metro Council and the Mayor's Office for all the support and, of course, for this testimony. This is something that the men and women of the National Fire Department do every, every day. Uh, the four major emergencies uh, that we deal with, uh, everything from heart attacks, from strokes and choking, and, of course, cardiac arrest. Small example of what we do on a daily basis. In just a six-week period, I had that pulled up, and I was trying to impress you guys. Well, well, this is important because uh, first, I'm honored to be the chief of such a great department of guys that put it on the line, men and women put it on the line every day. But just in a six-day period, to give you an example, what we do, we made 83 psychiatric calls. We made um, 16 strokes. We had 80 chest pain. We had 18 cardiac arrests. It just is in a six-day period. We're well over 130-some thousand uh, calls that we do every year. But again, at this year and date, but I just want to acknowledge the men and women of the National Fire Department and, uh, and all the great work that they do. And thank you guys for acknowledging and always supporting us. So again, thank you guys. <laughs> And, and then finally, Chair, I'd like to ask Judge Dalton, just say a quick word. Thank you so much to the uh, Metro Council. I actually wrote something down because I didn't want a judge at a loss for words. Imagine that. Um, but I want to say thank you for uh, acknowledging our first responders for the work that they do daily, ensuring our safety and well-being for all of us in our community. Thank you also for the opportunity to bring to the forefront the importance of recognizing the signs of a stroke. Never in a million years did I imagine that I would actually be sitting just a matter of feet away from my colleague and witnessing her suffering a stroke. And it was a very scary moment, but I knew that I had to bring it together so that she could be standing right here right now. And I'm thankful for that opportunity. But I think well, the takeaway from all of this is that we understand and recognize what those symptoms and signs are because it can save a life. So thank you for this acknowledgement. Thank you to our first responders for what you do every day. I don't think that the city really acknowledges that enough. So just let me say thank you for the work that you do every day to make sure that we are all safe uh, uh, in, in our city. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Chair. Um, we, we've got uh, copies of the resolution with Rosie over there. Thank you so much. You. Really appreciate it. Thank you for your service. Thank you, Council Member. Announcements Council Member Bradford. <laughs> Thank you, Pro Tem. Um, just a couple of brief announcements for those in District 13. Um, there will be no co coffee with your councilman for this month uh, for the in observance of the holidays. Um, next Wednesday, December 15th at 6 p.m. will be the District 13 quarterly town hall. It will be hosted by uh, BNA Airport and TDOT at 815 Hangar Lane. That is BNA's joint con uh, consolidated service facility. The topics will be BNA expansion and the Donaldson Pike interchange. So I invite everybody, not just in District 13, but Districts 14 and, and 15 as well. 
and just to advise um, constituents that I will be out of town the week of Christmas, so I will not have access to my email. So if, if there's any emergencies, I ask just the, that they reach out to any of our wonderful at-large um, council members or any of our local Donaldson Hermitage council members. With that, thank you. Thank you, envious. Council Member Parker. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I just wanted to point out these lovely poinsettias that are on each member's desk today. These were uh, donated by uh, Holt Camp Greenhouses in District 5, and they're a gift from Holt Camp and the residents of District 5. Thank you. Thank you. Other announcements? Council Member Sepulveda. Thank you, Chair. I uh, just wanted to let people in my district, District 30, know that I am having office hours this Saturday from 10 to 11 at La Delicia Mexican Restaurant. Uh, este sábado tendré horas de oficina en La Delicia Mexican Restaurant. Allí por la Limbar for anyone who wants to attend. Thank you. Other announcements? Councilmember O'Connell, what's on your mind? Since you brought it up, uh, I, got, I should have my computer ready to check this. It's, uh, you probably know off the top of your head now. That redistricting.nashville.gov? Redistrict. Redistrict.nashville.gov. So there is a third version of the uh, Metro Council and School Board maps that the planning department has produced. It is a version C of these maps. This is going to set the stage for uh, how we govern ourselves over the next 10 years. So I would encourage uh, citizens to visit redistrict.nashville.gov to take a look at those maps, submit feedback, and uh, get ready for the next, next look at, at how we're going to self-govern in Metro. Thank you, Council Member. Any other announcements? Encore. Yeah, I just, I wanted to call, I mean, we've, we are working on a resolution, but I did want to point out that um, the Nashville Children's Theater is celebrating their 90 years of being just an extraordinary opportunity. It is a gem of both District 19 and the city. Um, their current performance is uh, the Elves and the Shoemaker, and I do encourage people to just take a look at what they've got. They've got amazing performances year-round, obviously, like anything in the performing arts. Uh, COVID presented them with some challenging circumstances, especially for children, but they've like, like a lot of our local venues, done a lot to focus on safety, and I encourage people, if you're not familiar with the work of the Nashville Children's Theater, become familiar with it. It's been an amazing 90-year journey, and our, I know our family has enjoyed it uh, for the last several years, so encourage people to check out Nashville Children's Theater. Thanks again. Council Member Allen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have uh, three meetings that I would like to announce. We are uh, beginning at the budget information series following in the um, footsteps of my predecessors, offering both the budget, the Metro Council's budget committee and the, the community the opportunity to get a better understanding of how the Metro budget works. So the first one will be this Thursday, December 9th at 6 p.m. in Council Chambers. We will hear a two-part series on how Metro gets the money, so how appraisals work and how the tax rate is set. Uh, the second meeting will be December 15th. That's a Wednesday at 6 p.m. in Council Chambers, um, where we will learn about um, grants and sales tax and how that money comes to Metro. That will be followed up in January by additional sessions dealing with how Metro spends money. So if you want to learn more about how we put our budget together, this is a great educational opportunity. So I hope everyone will... Join us for that, and also the Budget and Health Committees will be hosting a joint special committee next Monday, I believe that's a Monday, December 13th, um, just to give us more information on the emissions testing program that we are looking at ending, uh, what the implications of that are, and what some other options are that we can look at uh, just to ensure that our air quality stays good. So I would invite my members to join us for that as well. That's December 13th at 6 p.m. It's not at 6 p.m., it's at 5 p.m. Uh, it will be listed on the council calendar. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you, council member. Council member Sledge. 
Thank you. Two quick things to note in District 17, both uh, coming up on Saturday the 11th. Um, Casa Zafran, uh, Conexion Americas has its annual holiday bazaar. That's going to be at Casa Zafran from 11 to 3 p.m. That's where you can support local immigrant entrepreneurs um, and do some of your holiday shopping. And then the second community meeting for the Fort Negley uh, master plan will also take place Saturday the 11th. Um, that will be during the 157th anniversary of the Battle of Nashville, the living history event that will be going on there um, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. So there's opportunities to give um, your input and comments on what you want to see from the master plan for Fort Negley. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. I'll take the opportunity to announce that uh, in the last couple of weeks, the school board voted unanimously to name the new school uh, being built in Bellevue, the new high school, James Lawson High School. Uh, Dr. Lawson, of course, the architect of the nonviolent civil rights movement has done so much amazing work in Nashville, based in Nashville, across the nation. Um, I'm thrilled at, about the vote, the huge community support, and that Dr. Lawson has expect, uh, expressed his desire to be on hand when the ribbon is cut. Anybody else? All right, council meeting in 15 minutes.